Welcome home. Man, welcome to Discovery Church. So glad you're joining us, those that are here, those that are online. And I want to invite you to turn to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, we've been going verse by verse through Hebrews chapter 11 for about six weeks now. And just uh, looking at the different stories, the men and women found uh, in, in, in Hebrews 11, looking back to their lives of faith and, and saying, Lord, how can we live a life by faith? How can we live a life by faith? And so, Lord, change us, challenge us that we would live in obedience to you. And so Hebrews chapter 11, we're going to begin in verse 13. Verse 13 through 16, as you're turning in your Bibles, and uh, verses 13 through 16, it's kind of a transition, if you will, if you read starting in verse 1 all the way to this point, or if you've been with us over the past several weeks, uh, it, it serves as kind of a transition. It's a stopping point, and it really points us back. It reminds us of the different lives of faith that we've looked at, that, 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 uh, that we've spent some time uh, uh, studying and and striving to, again, live uh, uh, like and, and, and to grow in our obedience in the faith. And so verses 13 uh, says this, these all died in faith. These all died in faith. And so if you're not familiar with the, the context, uh, the verses leading up to verse 13, we've looked at uh, the life of, of Abel. We've looked at the life of Enoch. We've looked at the life of Noah. We've looked at the life of Abraham and Sarah in verses 1 through 12. And so Abel, if you open up and you see beginning in verse 4, Abel doesn't even speak a word. We don't even find, we don't even find a word in the uh, biblical and historical narrative in Genesis. We don't even find a word. He never speaks a word. But what we do find is a life of faith. That is, he he presented the uh, acceptable sacrifice to the Lord, and it was by faith that he did that. And so these all died in, in faith. We, we find that Enoch had such a favor with the Lord that he didn't even experienced death here uh, on this earth, which is, blows my mind. And, and then we find Noah, that God called Noah to build what? This big old boat, right? This ark, and, and it was by faith. We see uh, in verse uh, 7, I believe it was, it was by, by faith that Noah built this ark. Uh, he had walked closely with the Lord. He obeyed the Lord carefully. And so he built this ark by, by faith. Uh, and, and then these all died in, in faith. And then we see the life of Abraham and Sarah. Abraham, God told Abraham to go to a distant land. Anyone in favor of that? Like the Lord just saying, hey, get up and move all your stuff. Take it all with you. You're never going back. And, and, and most of us would probably sit there and fight a little bit, argue a little bit, or maybe just stay put. And Abraham, by faith, right, we see it by faith, Abraham picked up stuff, and he started heading to a distant land, trusted God. Some of us did that, in fact, and that's how you ended up in Florida, right? Uh, and so that was Abraham. These all died in faith right? These all died in faith. And then we see Sarah. Sarah couldn't conceive, right? Sarah couldn't conceive, but it was by, by faith. It was by faith and certainly the power of God, the power of God that provided a children at a crazy old age. And uh, God uh, uh, was good to her and he is still good to us. Amen. These all died in faith, although they had not received the things that were promised. I'm going to focus in on that just for a minute. The things that they had promised. See, see, as we look back, one of the things that I love about Hebrews 11 is we're looking back uh, in the lives of these Old Testament uh, biblical and, and uh, historical characters. They had such faith in God. They believed in the promises of God. See, they were looking forward to the promises of God. Now, something really beautiful right here today is that as the New Testament church, we can look back to the promises of God. Now, again, the Old Testament characters were looking forward to the promises of God that one day a Messiah would come. The, the beauty of the gospel is that from the beginning, from, from the, that moment that Adam and Eve sinned against holy God and fellowship was broken in the garden of Eden and perfection that they experienced in paradise was lost. Guess what? God has been pursuing humanity from the beginning, pursuing humanity. He's been pursuing you. He's been pursuing me. All humanity. That's the point of the gospel. That's why Jesus came over 2,000 years ago. The promise of God fulfilled. These men and women looking forward to the promise of God and we, we as the New Testament church get to look back and say, thank you God for fulfilling your promises, that you are a good God, that you do what you say. His promises are, are true. These all died in faith, although they had not received the things that were promised. Now look at the next part. But, but they saw them from a distance. They saw them from a distance. They greeted them, confessed that they were foreigners and temporary residents on the earth. Now there's this 
again, another kind of transition here where we begin to point to another promise of God, that there's something better to experience than this earth. There's something better that is awaiting those who are in Christ Jesus. And that place is heaven. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful uh, thing that just kind of blows our mind. I don't know if you've sat there and thought about heaven. It's, hard, it's kind of hard to fathom. Can we just be honest? It's kind of hard to fathom heaven and all its glory and, and Jesus and all his glory. And I mean, we get tastes of it, right? We get tastes of it. Uh, one of the things I love about gathering as the church is being able to sing and worship. And I can just imagine us uh, surrounding the throne as, as the angels are doing even now. And holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and who is to come. What a day that's going to be when people from all over the world gather as one voice worshiping the Savior who is Jesus. It's going gonna, it's gonna to blow all of our minds. Uh, uh, we don't quite understand all the things that are going to happen. If you think you do, you don't. Uh, and just kind of slip that in there, just kind of on the down low. All right, cool. And, and so there, there's so many things that we just don't understand. But uh, we understand one thing, that Jesus came over 2,000 years ago, and he really came, and that he really died, and he really was placed in a grave, and that tomb is empty. Uh, There's no bones left back there. He rose victorious uh, so that we could be made right and forgiven and have this hope of heaven one day. Look at verse 14. Now those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. I underline that word homeland in my Bible. It's because that just kind of jumped off the page. That wow, wow, it connects back to the, we're foreigners, we're temporary residents, that this earth is not our home. For those who are in Christ Jesus, this earth is not our home. We're not citizens here. We're citizens of heaven for those that are in Christ Jesus. That they, they were seeking a homeland. Look at verse 15. If they were thinking about where they came from, they would have had an opportunity to return. Do you get that? Does that connect with you? If if they were looking forward and and thinking about that there's something something better, they could have returned. But no, no, they weren't thinking there was something better. They were just following the Lord and his promises, though they didn't fully understand. Uh, Their their focus was on, on, on the Lord and honoring the Lord and walking closely with the Lord and trusting that he is a God who keeps his, his promises. Look at verse 16. But they now desire a better place, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Well, once again, the, these Old Testament characters, they're looking forward to something better. They're believing that God had prepared a city for them, a better place for them. And that place is, is heaven, and it was awaiting as they walked in fellowship with God. And, and you and I, uh, as a New Testament church, again, get to look back and say, once again, thank you, Jesus, for coming and dying and rising again. I surrender over to you as Lord of my life, and in return, Man, I receive forgiveness of sins. I get to walk with creator God. And one day after this life is over, heaven is awaiting. And if I could just share four simple words with you today as a believer. For those that are in Christ Jesus, for those that have surrendered their lives over to Jesus, it's just four very, very simple words. I'm a simple person, so we're going to keep it simple. Uh, Four very simple words, and it's this. Stay focused on heaven. Stay focused on heaven. I think there's a lot of lot of things going on in this world and a, and a lot of things that catch our attention and, 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 and uh, in our eyes, and, and it distracts us from the main thing. I was taught growing up in seminary, uh, keep the main thing the main thing, right? <laughs> uh, uh, and, and so many times we forget the main thing. What, what, it's, what, what this life is, is about, the purpose of this life, what God has called each of us to. Stay focused on heaven. And perhaps there's someone here today that that you're saying, Tim, I'm not in Christ Jesus. So what does that mean to me? What does it mean to me? I'm not going to stay focused on heaven. I can't, how can I stay focused on heaven if I've never surrendered my life over to Jesus? Well, rather than four words, I got two words for you. Rather than four words, I got two, right? Any opportunity I get to, to celebrate someone's life uh, uh, that is uh, lead a funeral. Uh, and today we're not leading a funeral. Amen. All right. Um, uh, and so, but anytime I get that opportunity, man, 
I, I wrestle with this because I'm like, all right, God, it's like I, I keep saying the same thing over and over again. Is there something new? Is there something fresh? And he's like, no, there's nothing new and there's nothing fresh. It's two words. Share these two words. You can't go wrong with these two words. And so if you're not in Christ today, listen to these two words very, very closely. The greatest decision you could ever make is to choose heaven. It's to choose heaven. So for those that are not in Christ, Jesus, my plea, my plea with you is to choose heaven. And if you are in Christ Jesus, once again, it's stay focused on heaven. Stay focused on heaven. Look at Revelation chapter 21, Revelation 21, verse 3. Revelation 21, verse 3. Then I heard a loud voice from the throne. Look, God's dwelling is with humanity, and he will live with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them and will be their God. God's dwelling is with humanity. Once again, from the beginning, this is God's desire to walk in fellowship with you, to have a dwelling with you. We have this access to creator and sustainer God. That alone blows my mind each day. Like the God that as I wake up and I look around and I see his creation all around and how he keeps everything going, right? Like only sovereign God could do that. And I'm blown away that that same God wants to walk with me. That same God wants to talk to me. That same God wants me to approach him. And that same God has given me the access through his son, Jesus. And we see that God's dwellings with humanity and he will live with, with them. Look at verse four. Verse four paints this picture for us. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Grief, crying, and pain will be no more because the previous things have passed away. Let's just pause there just for a moment. Pause there just for a moment because, God, I don't want you to miss this, right? We're, we're, we're seeing this picture of heaven, this picture of heaven. We have a glimpse of what heaven's going to be like. So we can kind of begin to understand the beauty that is awaiting those who are in Christ Jesus that is heaven. Death will be no more. Grief, crying, pain will be no more. It's almost daily that we experience one of these things. Is, is that true for you? At least it's true for me. And certainly as a pastor, um, my, my, my calling is to minister to many different people. And, uh, but, but whether you're, you're, you're a pastor or not, we, we still experience these things. Why is that? Because we live in a broken world. We experience death, grieving, crying, pain. But there's coming a day, church. There's coming a day that we will no longer experience these things. What a day that's going to be. What a day that's going to be when we no longer experience death. When we no longer have to walk through that grieving process. And some, sadly enough, never walk through that grieving process. And, and, and one day it just hits them. Uh, but, but one day, there's coming a day we'll, we'll no longer have to go through that. And there's coming a day where, where there's no, going to be no more tears and there's going to be no more pain because the previous things have passed away. Look at verse 5. Verse 5, then the one seated on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. I am making everything new. New. He also said, right, because these words are faithful and true. Aren't, aren't you thankful that we can trust God? When we're unfaithful, he is faithful. We, we heard that last week. We, we can trust God because he's a faithful God. His word is true. I, I love uh, what Craig Groeschel says. He says this, our faith isn't based on what God does. Our faith isn't based on what God does. Our faith is based on on who God is. Our faith is based not on what God does, but on who God is. Why is that? Because the very character of God, he can be trusted. He's a God who keeps his promises. He's a God who keeps his word. Unlike me and you, he's a God that is always on time. And, and, and that time, as we kind of sang a moment ago, that time is different for all of us, right? 
How many times have we prayed for something and it just hasn't come through? You've ever been there? We're praying and we're crying out to God and we're doing all these things and, and we're telling God what we need. Hey, you ever been there? Okay, I'm the only one. All right, cool. I'm not alone. Uh, we're telling God what we need. God, do this. You have to do this. You have to do this. We're, we're telling our list of demands. And, and, and by the way, God is not Santa Claus, right? And so, uh, but, but we're telling him and he doesn't come through. At least he doesn't come through the way we think he should come through. You know, the comfort that we experience in this world is in a God who always comes through. And it might just look a little different than what you think, than what I think. And that's where trusting the one who is sovereign and sovereign alone comes into play in your life, in my life. Verse verse 6, then he said to me, it is done. I love this man. It is done. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. I, I will I will freely give to the thirsty from the spring of the water of life. He says, he says, you know, I'm the letter A and I'm the letter Z and I'm everything in between. That, that's what that's what the scripture is saying. It, it is done. I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. That is, there is no one like me. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of fakes, there's a lot of frauds, but I am the only one. And then he says this, I will freely give to those who are thirsty. I don't know where you're at today, man. I don't know if, if, you're, if you're hungry, you're thirsty. Again, it's all connecting in, 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 a, in, a, in, in the songs that we just proclaimed to, to the Lord. And, 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 and we didn't talk about any of this, by the way, but it's all connecting. I will freely give to the, the thirsty from the spring of the water of life. That is how good our God is. That he just continues to give, continues to give, continues to give. Even when we turned our back on him and we're walking away from him, guess what he's still doing, man? He's still giving. He's still pouring out. And then we return to him and we say, thank you, Jesus, that you never stop, that you never stop pursuing me, that your love is unconditional, uh, and that you, you give to the thirsty from the spring of the water of life. Verse 7, the one who, will, the one who conquers will, will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son, do you see the relationship? The relationship, man, God longs for a relationship with us. Again, from, from the beginning, it's been about pursuing us in a relationship with us. And we have this access, once again, because of Jesus. And one day, you know, we, we, we want the tangible. Can we just admit that? We want the tangible. I mean, the disciples, they were scared to death, freaking out. What do you mean? What do you mean? You're about to, like, shoot up, and, and what does that mean for us? We've been able to touch you. We've, you've been, you're right here. And he's saying, no, I'm going to be right here with you, right? I'm sending the Holy Spirit, who's the comforter, who's going to walk with you. And I'll never leave you nor forsake you. We see that in scriptures and in Hebrews uh, later on. But, but the, we want the tangible so many times, but guess what? There's coming a day that that desire is fulfilled in heaven. Where we're surrounded by his, we're surrounded, surrounding his throne in worship of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And my encouragement today, church, no, no matter what you're walking through, would be this to stay focused on heaven. That these Old Testament characters were focused on something that was awaiting them. They were focused on a homeland. They were focused on a better place. They were focused on a dwelling with God. I mean, we see that, right? You see that in, in the text here in Hebrews 11. They were focused on heaven. And I believe that we ought to be focused on heaven. Listen, if Satan can't destroy you, he he will distract you. I want you to know that today. If Satan can't destroy you, he, he will distract you. Now, we know that John 10.10 10 says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? He wants nothing more than to destroy you. But listen, if he can't destroy you, he's going to distract you. He's going to take your eyes off of the things that really matter, the, the main things. Who is Jesus? He's the main thing, right? And so if he can't destroy you, he's going to dis- distract you. He's going to distract you. And that's why there's this call for us as the church to stay focused on heaven. Not, not focused on the things of the earth, but to stay focused on heaven. And as we're focused on heaven, as our eyes are straight ahead on King Jesus, guess what? The distractions, they're going to come and they're going to go. But our eyes remain fixed and focused on the one who remains the same, who does not change in his name is Jesus. Colossians chapter 3, I'd encourage you to write this reference down. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. So you, so if you have been raised with, with Christ, Paul's talking to the church. He's writing a letter of encouragement to the church in Colossae. 
one of the New Testament churches, right? And he says this, if you've been raised with Christ, seek the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. If you've been raised with Christ, how many of you have ever experienced baptism? Have you been baptized yourself? If not, let's talk about that next step. But, but one of the things that we see represented in baptism, and as, as you go under the water, right, it's a representation of two things, in my opinion, two things. One is it's a representation of what Jesus did for you and for me, right? He went to the cross he was placed in a grave, and he rose victorious from the grave. But it's also a beautiful representation of your life and my life. That, that who I was before Christ is now put to death. And, and as I come up out of the water, I'm raised to new life in Christ. And so we see that. So if you've been raised with Christ, seek the things above. Seek the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Uh, once again, stay focused, church. Stay focused on heaven, no matter the circumstances that surround you. And some of us, I'm not trying to be light on, uh, on the circumstances. Man, for, for some, of they're, they're deeply painful and, and extremely dark. And you don't know if you're ever going to get through this thing. Can I just tell you that there is light at the end of the tunnel? It's heaven. No matter what this life looks like and what this life brings and the distractions uh, that, that come from the enemy, no matter what comes, listen to this, there's light at the end of the tunnel and it's heaven. Look at verse 2. Colossians 3, 2. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. I, I just ripped off his message to the church in Colossae here. Stay focused on heaven. How many times, I mean, how many times do we just stop and we're like, man, there's so many things going on in my mind. I can't even think straight. I can't even, I can't even do the next task. You ever been there? And you struggle with that? It's like, I want to I cross this thing off, but I just can't. Why I'm struggling with this. Can I just encourage you, believer? Just pause and ask the Lord to set your mind back on, on him. Stay focused on heaven. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Stay focused on heaven, not on, not on earth. There's a greater calling in your life. Listen, if you're not dead, God's not done with you. I had a, a great conversation with an elderly woman just uh, after the first experience. She's like, I I've asked the Lord to take me several times. But he hasn't. And I said, praise God. You know why? Because he isn't finished with you. He isn't finished with you. This life is not about us. It's about the Lord Jesus working through us. And as we have this heavenly perspective, just, just pause here just for a moment. As we have this heavenly perspective, think about this. Think about the people that God has placed in your life. And as far as you can tell, this isn't a judgment time. This isn't a condemnation time. How many of you know that there's only one judge and it's the Lord our God? It's not you. If you think it's you, you're wrong. It's the Lord our God. But just from the evidence of one's life, you just think about the people that maybe they've even confessed to you that they don't walk with the Lord, that they don't want anything to do with the Lord. What would it look like to begin to cry out for their souls? For the one, that if they were to die today, the reality is they would spend an eternal damnation in hell. Not made up. That's what scripture teaches on the authority of scripture. Now the gift of God, which is salvation, the free gift of grace, has been presented to the world. And some of you think, well, how, how could God, such a loving God, send anyone to hell I think we've missed it. He's given us salvation in Jesus Christ. It's up to each person to accept or reject it. But you think about those that are in your life, in your circle of influence that are not in relationship with Christ. What would it look like to begin praying for them? To begin sharing the gospel with them? Not to who can have the better debate, by the way. Man, I, I, can I just tell you, I hate debates. I'm not a debater. If you're on Facebook with me and you're looking for a debate, go somewhere else. It's not going to happen here. I got bigger things to do, spend my time on, right? 
like actually trying to win people to, to, to the Lord and, and pointing people to Jesus, right? That, I mean, that's my calling in life. That's your calling, by the way. Not just because I'm a pastor and I'm on the platform. That's our calling as the church to go make disciples that make disciples, to tell people that Jesus loves them, that Jesus saves, that Jesus is the only hope. Talking about Facebook, though, as, as we close, last, last week I, I shared this, this, this just a couple-minute video clip of Lou Holtz sharing at a graduation ceremony, and I, and I love this. I love what he said near the end of this video. He said these words, you can't take money to heaven, but you can take your children. As soon as he said, as soon as he said that, I was like, whoa, park, park the, pump the brakes, man, pump the brakes here. You can't take money to heaven, but, but you can't take your children. What, what does he really mean by that? Well, I believe what he really means is there's so many distractions in this life. So many of us, man, we're pursuing that, that mighty dollar, if I only get this promotion, then I can get more money and then I'll be satisfied. And when we get that promotion and we get more money, we, we realize we're not, we're not satisfied. And so it, it's the next promotion. The next promotion is going to give me the satisfaction. No, no, no. The only satisfaction will come through a relationship with Jesus Christ. The only satisfaction. And I just wonder how many times we sacrifice our children, parents, to speak to you just for a moment. How many times we sacrifice our children knowing and hearing that Jesus loves them? I mean, you think about the last time you prayed with your children. The last time you let them know that Jesus loves them. That you opened up the Bible and just read with them just for a minute. Last time you brought them to church. I love that. You can't take money to heaven, but you can take your children. Are they seeing the gospel in you? We... One of our values at Discovery is the next generation. We love the next generation. Pastor Mike and, and our, our kids team, they work so hard at creating environments where children can encounter Jesus, can feel like they belong in a world where they, it's hard to belong, where they can experience love, no matter the home they come from or the school they go to, the neighborhood they live in. I just, I, I wonder today where our focus is. I share this in a close. If you really want to a gauge, a metric, how many numbers people we got? Cool, no, none? Awesome. I'm not even the numbers person, and I'm like the only one. All right, cool. Uh, half, uh, half going on here. But, but listen, uh, if you really want to gauge in a metric of the priorities in your life, the focus of your life, do something really scary, really scary. Pull up your bank account. <laughs> pull, pull up your bank account. I, now, anyone that pulls up my bank account, they, they're going to know. They're going to know a couple things about me. One, they're going to know that I frequent Starbucks a lot. I'm honest. They're, they're going to know that Audra and I love food. <laughs> but they're specifically tacos. But, but they're also going to know, they're also going to know that that Audra and I, we give unto the Lord. That the Lord Jesus is a priority in our life. That he has been so faithful, man, so faithful over the years. But just what, is, what does it look like in your personal life? Are you focused on the things that matter? Are you focused on, on heaven? Would you bow your heads? Would you close your eyes? Would you, just, would you just think about that just for a moment? I can't answer for you the response, your response to, to, to the Lord today. And I can only answer for myself. And, and trust me, when I say the Lord has been speaking this week over and over again. I just wonder though here today, have you chosen heaven? If you have, are you focused on heaven? As you pray, as believers pray all over this place, maybe you realize your, your priorities are a little out of sync. Maybe your job is your number one priority. Can I just tell you, according to scripture, it shouldn't be. Your relationship with the Lord, I believe, should be your number one priority. 
I'm going to get a whole other message about crappy excuses and But the Lord, our God, is he your number one priority? If you're married, is your spouse your, your number two priority? Is your children a priority? Number three. Then your calling, where God has placed you. What does it look like in your life? Is there a balance? Some, some need a little more balance. Try to bring a little more balance in your life. Would you just pray, God, I need your strength. Man, we, we desperately need the strength. We can't do this thing on our own. But as people are praying all over this place, if there's someone here that you say, Tim, I, if, I don't, if I were to die right now, I'm not sure where I would spend eternity, but I want to know. Can I just tell you that on the authority of Scripture, you can know. You can be saved and set free. It's all about the gospel. It's always been about the gospel. Would you just pray with me? Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. And I need you to save me. You are the only Savior. I believe that you came to this earth, that you died on a cross, that you were placed in a grave, and that you rose victorious from the grave. You are Lord of my life. You are boss now of my life. I surrender over to you. Thank you for saving me. If that's your prayer today, as people are still praying, would you see one of our home team on your way out? We got a Bible. Would you stop by our VIP tent or see one of our home team? We got a Bible we want to give you. If you're saying, hey, what's my next step? That's your next step. We want to give you a Bible. We want to encourage you. We want to let you know you made the greatest decision that you could ever make today. Man, I love to spend some time talking with you, walking you through this decision. But Lord, we, we come before you thanking you for this, this, this time to gather as your church, to sing songs of praise to you, to fellowship with one another, to open up your word, to allow you to speak, to pray, to just pause from the chaos of life. And Lord, we say thank you. For you are a God who keeps his promises. Lord, thank you that heaven is awaiting. Help us to stay focused on heaven. Lord, now as we continue to worship you through giving of tithes and offerings, Lord, I I pray that as we step out on faith and obey your word, that you would bless each, each person. Lord, as we honor you. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen.